Welcome to the, the shape note uh, sheet uh, solutions. Okay, you should be uh, making some key notes uh, in preparation for next year's GCSE exams and uh, make a note of any sort of questions that you're, you're having a little bit more difficulty with. Okay, so you can check your solutions for the questions you have done. On this first question here then, I am being asked to, to calculate angle X. And if I knew this angle here, then I could use it to find angle X on a straight line. But I've got no way of finding that angle. So that's one way I've got to rule out. But if I have a look here, I've got a triangle. So I should know that angles in any triangle must sum to 180 degrees. And already that this one here is 29 degrees. I need to find this one here. Can I do that? Well, this angle here is next to the 108 degrees on a straight line. So another key angle rule is that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So if I take 108 away from 180 degrees, leaves me with 72 degrees left. So I now know that that angle is 72 degrees here. I can now use that 72 degrees with the 29 degrees and I can add those together because they are two of the angles in the triangle. So adding them together gives me 101 degrees. And now I've got those 101 degrees. I can subtract it from the 180 degrees that they all add up to. And that leaves me with 79 degrees. So in this case, X is equal to 79 degrees. And here are my calculations to show how I've worked it out. To then uh, part B, I'm asked, being asked to calculate the size of angle Y, which is on the outside of the shape. It's called an exterior angle. And in order to help me find that, I need this angle that's next to it on the straight line. So again, these two angles here must sum to 180 degrees. If I have a look carefully, I've got a shape, which is a quadrilateral. Yeah, so I've got four sides and four angles. And angles in any quadrilateral add up to 362, uh, 360 degrees. So I've got 132 degrees, 126 degrees, and 61 degrees. And the first thing I can do is add those three together. So. Doing that gives me the following, I'll carry one, so 319 degrees. And now I can subtract that 319 from 360. So doing that, just need to make sure I borrow because I can't do zero take away nine, but now I can do 10 take away nine, five take away one, and three take away three is zero. So this angle here now I know is 41 degrees. So now, I know I've got what I need to find Y because I need to take that 41 degrees away from 180. So my final calculation is to take 41 away from 180. So again, I need to borrow. So just doing the basics will help me work out what I need. So in this case then, Y will be 139 degrees. And the final question on these basic angle rules, we can see here I'm being asked to find X, which is again on the outside of this shape here. So it's an exterior angle. And again, it's this one next to it here that I need because these two again, angles on a straight line, I know that those two angles add to 180 degrees. But I'm gonna to come to this triangle here and I know that all triangles have interior angles that add to 180 degrees. But I'll also note this, there's no angle in this corner here either. But I've got an isosceles triangle here, and in an isosceles triangle, I know that two sides are the same, which is why we've got these two markings here, and the two base angles are also the same. So this angle is also the same size as this angle here. So if I take this 52 degrees now away from 180, okay, it leaves me with 128 degrees and that's now got to be shared equally between these two base angles so I need to divide 128 28 by 2 
or half of 128, which is 64. So I know that this one here has a, an angle of 64. I know this one here has 64 degrees as well. Now, it's these by here that I'm interested in. Okay, I'm only interested in this 64 with the 180. So if I take 64 now away from 180, it will tell me what X is. So in this case, X is 116 degrees. Number two is about parallel lines. And before we have a look at this question, there are three rules really for parallel lines. Parallel lines never touch. And as soon as we create a line that goes through them, we create the number of angles at those points. Now, the first rule I want to show you is that these two angles here are the same. They're in the same position, just below the parallel line. And you might have seen in the past that if I join up those lines that create the angles, look, I've made the letter F. We sometimes refer to them as F angles, but the correct math terminology is that they are corresponding angles and they are equal in size. So the other one, I said there was three. So the second one, again, draw my two parallel lines on my line now that creates some angles. And that is that this angle here and this angle here are also equal in size. Again, if I draw lines in, that join up the ones that create the angles you can see here made like a z shape and in this case we refer to z angles in their proper notation and we call them alternate angles and again they're equal in size and the final one that we could use for angles on parallel lines so again i've drawn the same diagram is that these two angles here that are on the same side of the line that are also in between the parallel lines because they're on the same side and in between we call them allied they're together see they're next to each other they're together it makes like a c shape and we call these allied angles because they're together and allied angles always add up to 180 degrees so there's the three key things that we're looking for in this question here. So if I have a look here, I'm being told that in this diagram here, that's 55 degrees. And if I come up to here, look, I also know that because I've got the parallel lines, that this one here is also 55 degrees. It's on the same side of the line, but also in the same position, which means they're corresponding. So X. It's 55 degrees, and the reason is because it's a corresponding angle. Right. The second one then that we do is, is the Y. If I have a look here at Y. Y is next to this 55 degrees and on the same side of the line, so it's allied. So to find Y, I need to take 155 uh, degrees away from 180, which leaves me with 125 degrees. So Y is 125 degrees. And the reason we've got that answer is because it's allied. And finally, Z is in the shape at the bottom here. And to find Z, we've got no other information in around it. If I look carefully, Z is part of this triangle at the very bottom of the picture of the diagram. And I know that angles in any triangle add up to 180 degrees. What I need for that is this angle here. Now, there's two ways I can find it. I can either put these two together, and I now know that this here is 55 degrees, and they add up to 180. So in order to find this other missing one here, I need to take 55. Sorry, this one here is 125 degrees. I need to take 125 away from 180, which leaves us with 55. So I know that that one's 55. And I also know, look, that it's corresponding with these two above it. So that 55 is corresponding with those two above as well. OK, now in the triangle now, I've got two angles. One is 80 degrees and the other is 55 degrees. So I can add those two together to get 135 degrees. And then I could subtract 135 from 180 which leaves me with 45. So in this case, Z is equal to 45 degrees. And the reason 
It's because angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. And by writing down our reasons, it's very helpful that you know we understand how we solve these problems. Section three then is all about interior and exterior angles of uh, polygons. Uh, so here I've got a regular pentagon. So the, here's my regular pentagon here. And here's my quadrilateral. So because it's regular, all these angles in the pentagon are the same. Being asked to calculate X, which is around this point here. And angles around a point always sum to 360 degrees. So I need to work out this angle here in the pentagon and I need to work out this angle here in the quadrilateral to help me. So first of all, then, if we go back to angles uh, in a polygon, this is a five-sided shape. Remember, I can cut it up so that it makes three interior triangles. So it's got five sides and three triangles. The number of triangles will always be two less than the number of sides. So five take away two gives me three. And I know that each triangle contains 180 degrees. So by working out three of those, I know that the sum of these angles in here come to 540 degrees. So let's get rid of some of this information here then. Now, because all of these angles are equal, because it's a regular pentagon, I know I can just divide 540 into five equal parts, which leaves me with 108. So each of these here is 108 degrees. Well, I only need one of these because I only want the one that's linked to X. So I'm just gonna write that that one there is 108 degrees. Now I'm gonna focus on the quadrilateral. And angles in any quadrilateral four-sided shape must sum to 360 degrees. See here in this part, I've got a right angle, so I know that that's 90 degrees. So I've got 111 degrees, I've got 90 degrees, and I've got 57 degrees from three of the four angles. So if I now add those three together, it comes to 258 degrees. I'm going to subtract that now from 360 it'll tell me what's left for the missing angle which is 102 so here now I now know that this angle here is 102 if you remember back to my previous slide the sum of angles around a point is 360 so now I need to add up the 108 and the 102 that are around this point here so 108 plus 102 is 210 and I need to take that 210 away from 360, which leaves me with 150. So angle X in this case is 150 degrees. Right then, part B is asking us this time to calculate the exterior angle. So that's on the outside of a regular octagon. A regular means that all the sides and all the angles have the same size. So an octagon will have eight sides. It'll look something like that as a sketch, okay? So an octagon then has eight sides. There's two ways we could do this. We could find the interior angles first and then use that to find the exterior angles. But more simply, the exterior angles are all these ones that are on the outside of the shape. So we've got eight of these. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they go around the shape. So if they go right the way around the shape, they must make 360 degrees. So in order to find the exterior angle of a regular shape, it's 360 degrees divided by the number of sides the shape has. In this case, we've got eight sides. So in order to find the exterior angle of a regular octagon, I need to divide 360 by eight 
given me an answer of 45 degrees. So each one of those that I highlighted on the diagram here is 45 degrees, 45, and so on. Right, section four then is all about Pythagoras theorem. So really we need a calculator to hand to do these questions, a couple of maths watch clips here. And if you remember, the key thing is uh, that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and that is Pythagoras' theorem rule. c is always the longest side, so on this diagram here, our c is this side here, and a and b are your two short sides. So, in this case, I can type in 9.6 squared plus 7.2 squared will give me the answer for y squared. Uh, you need to do that on your calculators. So this one here is 92.16, 7.2 squared is 51.84, and that will give us the answer to y squared. If I add up the 92.16 and the 51.84, it gives me 144. So 144 is equal to y squared, and to find y, I need to square root. So square root in 144, y gives me an answer equal to 12. So in this case, y is equal to 12 centimeters. Part B then. Uh, on this one, again, we're coming across these lines on the triangle. It means so I've again got an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle has two equal sides and two equal angles. But it also has this line of symmetry down the middle. So I can cut this triangle in half and then I've got two equal triangles. And by here, I can see that I've got a right angle because I've got a horizontal line with a, a vertical line and they're perpendicular to each other. It means that if I look at this more closely that I've split the base of 30 millimeters up into 15 millimeters on each side. So effectively, I can work with just one of these triangles in order to find the height. So I've got my right angle, I've got the height. I know that this is 17 millimeters, and I know now that this one here on the base is 15 millimeters. So again, C is my longest side, so that's the 17, and my A and my B are the other two sides. So as I'm finding a short side this time, I subtract, and that's the rule, short side, we subtract. So if we can remember that, it makes life a little bit easier. So in order to find h here, it's h squared is equal to the longest side squared, subtract the other short side squared. So 17 squared, take away 15 squared. And again, just referring to your calculator, 17 squared is 289, 15 squared is 225, which when I take 225 from 289 leaves me with 64 and that's what h squared is so i need to find h it's so remembering with pythagoras theorem to at the end here square root 64 giving me an answer equal to 8 so square root of 64 gives me 8 so h is 8 and in this case it's 8 millimeters everything in the diagram is in millimeters. Right, section five on trigonometry is gonna be covered when you return to school face-to-face -face teaching. So section six then, the volume of a prism. Well, the volume of any prism is given by this. The volume is equal to the cross section area multiplied by the length of the prism. So the cross section area is what shape runs right the way through the prism. In this case, we can see that this triangle here runs right the way through the prism. So the area we want to find is the area of that triangle. So this is the cross section area. We multiply it by the length. Now we can see in the question here, they're asking us to give our answer for the volume in centimeters cubed. Now the height of the prism is 50 centimeters. The width of the prism is 40 centimeters but the length of the prism is given in meters, 1.2 meters. Now, as I want my answer in centimeters cubed, I need to convert that. So 
hopefully you know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So if I multiply 1.2 by 100, it gives me 120 centimeters. So that's what I'm going to use here. So I'm going to separate, sort this out now. So I got a triangle, so that's base times height. So that's base 40 times 50 divided by two. I'm going to multiply it by the length of the prism, multiplying it by 120. So that's how we find the volume. Now, if I'm doing this year, now I'm going to do 40 times 50, which is 2000. Then I'm going to divide it by two in a moment. I'll multiply it by the length. So if I divide 2000 by two, it gives me 1000. If I multiply it by the length 120, it gives me a final answer of 120,000 centimeters cubed. And again, if you want to separate that, put your comma in there. Right, a diff an another prism now is a cylinder, like your, your cans of Coke, your tubes of Pringles, etc. So it's got a circular cross section. So again, to do the volume on this one, it's going to be the cross section area multiplied, in this case, by the height. I am going to need to put the height on the diagram. So uh, the height is 11.9 centimetres. So that's this here. And it tells me the diameter is 54 millimetres. Now, again, I want my answer in centimetres cubed. So I want to change 54 millimetres into centimetres. And I know that there are 10 millimetres in every centimetre. So if I divide 54 by 10, it gives me 5.4 centimetres. And that's the diameter, which is the whole way across the base. So if I, there's the base, if we can see that here, the diameter goes all the way across here. And that is 5.4 centimetres. So once I've got that, I can now start focusing then on working it out. So the cross section is a circle. So that's a circle. So I need to know how to find the area of a circle. Multiply by the length of the height, so multiplying it by 11.9. Now, in order to do the area of a circle, I need to use pi times radius squared. In this diagram here, I'm being told that the diameter is 5.4 centimeters. So how do I calculate the radius from that, which is what I need to do for the area of a circle? Well, the radius is half of it. It's from the center to the outside. So half of 5.4 is 2.7 centimeters. So in this case then, the volume of this cylinder is pi r squared. So that's pi times 2.7 squared. I multiply that by 11.9. We can use a calculator to work that one out. And I've already done that. And it comes out as 272.536 and some more digits. So I want to round this effectively. So I'm going to cut the number off after two decimal places. And I'm going to use the six for rounding. Six will round up, so I round up the three to a four. So in this case, I've got 272.54 centimeters cubed, and that's correct two decimal places. You may, instead of using pi in your, in your question, use 3.14 instead. So to work out the volume, I can use 3.14. And again, the solution to this one is 272.398 and again some more digits so again round into two decimal places i would use the eight so 272.40 because i need to round up and our centimeters cubed and as you can see using either version they're very close together and either volume will give you full marks in an exam okay uh, section seven then is asking us to calculate the surface area of this cylinder. So again, our surface area is the outside. So how many faces does it have? So a cylinder has three faces. It has the top, it has this bottom section, and it has this wrapped around section here, okay, in the middle. So the best way of going about drawing, uh, working this out is to draw yourself a net. So here's the top. 
to circle. So to find the area of this one, uh, I need to do pi r squared, so pi times radius squared. And we already know that the radius is 2.7, so pi times 2.7 squared. And the bottom shape here also is pi r squared, so pi times 2.7 squared again. It's this middle section here, and I know that this height here is 11.9 centimeters, and I know it's a rectangle. So for a rectangle, I know it's length times width, so it's going to be 11.9 times whatever this length is here. Now hopefully, because we don't know that, we can see that that wraps around the top of the cylinder here. So it's going to wrap around the circumference of the circle. So it's going to be 11.9 times the circumference of a circle. And to do the circumference of a circle, it's going to be pi times diameter. Now we know that the diameter is 5.4. So in order to work out the area of this rectangle part of the shape, it's length times width, so 11.9 times pi times 5.4. All of these now need to go on your calculator. So top one here is 22.9022 and a few more digits and the same with the bottom one here. So there's the two areas of the circles. And to find the area of this rectangular part here, we type in 11.9 times pi times 5.4 giving me an area of 201.8787, a few more digits. Now I wanna know the total surface area. So I need to add up those three areas. So I need to add up my 22. I need to add up my 22.9022 twice. And I need to add the rectangle surface area as well. So in total, that gives me 247.6831 with a few more digits. So again, being consistent, round two decimal places. So use the three and it stays the same. So 247.68 centimetres squared is the total surface area. Right then, section eight then is about speed, distance and time. And for this section and this uh, topic area, you need to learn this speed, distance, time triangle here. So I'm being asked to calculate the average speed in this question. A woman has, drive, uh, has driven 78 miles in one hour and 30 minutes, and I'm being asked to calculate their average speed in miles per hour. Now, average speed is distance over time. So distance divided by time. I'm being asked though, we know the distance is 78 miles, but to give it in miles per hour. So I need to change one hour and 30 minutes into just hours. So how else do we think of 30 minutes? Well, we think of that as half an hour. So altogether, that's one and a half hours. And I write one and a half as 1.5. So in order to work out the average distance in this question, uh, the average speed in this question, I divide 78 miles by 1.5 hours. And 78 divided by 1.5 gives me an answer of 52. And in this case, that is 52 miles per hour. In this question, then a man runs at an average speed of 5.3 meters per second. He does that for, five, uh, for 16 minutes. So there's his speed and there's his time. We're being asked to calculate the distance. So distance is speed times time. But in this question, we've got to be careful because the units are different. He does 5.3 meters every second. So I need to know what 16 minutes are in seconds. 
So 16 minutes needs to be put into seconds. And in order to do that, in every minute, there are 60 seconds. So if I multiply 16 by 60, it tells me that there are 960 seconds in 16 minutes. So the distance then, he does 5.3 meters per second, and he runs for 960 seconds. So I now know that on the calculator, I can multiply 5.3 by 960, giving me an answer of 5,088, and that's 5,088 meters. Okay, density then is, is um, a topic that again requires a good knowledge of this triangle this time. So mass, density and volume are linked. So density is the mass of an object divided by the volume of the object. So uh, this cuboid here has got a mass of 5.4 kilograms and we are being asked to calculate its density. So we know that density will be this mass divided by the volume. So what do we know? We already know the mass here is 5.4 kilograms. So I've already got that part of it. But what I don't know is the volume. So can I calculate the volume of a cuboid? Well, the answer to that is yes. I just do the length times the width times the height of the cuboid. So that's my plan for this question. And if I have a look carefully though at the three units that are the three measurements of the cuboid, you can see that the units for two of them are in meters and the third one is in centimeters. Now there's two ways you can do this question. You can turn all three units into centimeters or you can turn all three units into meters. And that would be the quickest way of doing it because I only need to change this one into meters so 80 centimeters there are 100 centimeters in every meter so if i divide 80 by 100 it gives me 0 0.8 so i know that the width of this cuboid is 0 0.8 meters and now i've got those three to work out the volume so the volume of this cuboid is length times width times the height and they're all in meters I can calculate that using a calculator. So that gives me 3.52, and that's meters cubed. So I know now I've got the mass and the volume. So the density, mass divided by volume, will look like this. It'll be 5.4 kilograms divided by 3.52 meters cubed. That's the volume. So you need a calculator again now to, cal uh, to work this out. So 5.4 divided by 3.52 gives me an answer of 1.53 kilograms per meter cubed of the units. And I've rounded that correct to two decimal places. And finally then population density. Uh, population density relies on what population you've got and what area you've got. So we need the population and the area. So this is the triangle to learn for population density. So I'm going to use PD for population density because that's why I'm being asked in this question. And it's the population divided by the area. So let's have a look at the context of the question. It tells me a large circular Petri dish, so it's circular. It's got a diameter of 10 centimeters. And the population of bacteria on this dish is 4.3 times 10 to the power of seven organisms uh, that inhabit the surface area of the dish. So we've been asked to calculate the population density of the bacteria. So the population in this case is 4.3 times 10 to the power of seven, but I don't know the area of the dish. So I'm gonna to have to come back to this dish and I know again, find the area of a circle, it's pi times the radius squared. 
This is the diameter 10. So if we remember, the radius is half of 10, which is 5. So that's 5 squared. So in here, I can divide the population of bacteria by the area of the dish pi times 5 squared. Now that's exactly how I would type that onto the calculator. Uh, gives me a solution of 547,000. 493 bacteria organisms and that's per centimeter squared of the dish and that's been rounded to the nearest whole number thanks for listening